Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Best of 3 here in Arena Underground. This week we play Mythic Simic Ramp and Traditional Constructed Standard. As always, just a reminder, if you enjoyed the content, please click that like and subscribe button below. It's a way to provide free support to our channel. So let's talk about this deck. This is a version of Simic Ramp that took none other than Andrea Menguchi to a top 8 finish in Mythic Championship 7 on December 6. As the name implies, this is a ramp deck built around Nissa, who shakes the world, and our friendly Simic Color Elementals Risen Reef and Cavalier of Thorns. So basically, we have early ramp with our Arboreal Grazer, Liv Can Druid, and Grow Spiral. Then we go into a turn 3 Risen Reef, hopefully. And that then turns into a turn 4 Cavalier of Thorns or Nissa who shakes the world. And from there on, we are pretty far ahead. Now, for the end game, we have Hydroid Crasses, which is obviously a great card, especially with Nissa, because you get to play um, for X6, X8, X10. That draws you a lot of cards and also gives you a bit of extra life, which is, of course, awesome. Now, we also have Finale of Devastation. This is a very cool card that a lot of times surprises your opponent and wins the game out of nowhere. And our targets for this are mainly these two cards. We can get Agent of Treachery, who is still your, the best thing your opponent might have on the other side of the battlefield. And we get End Race Forerunner as well, which is obviously a way to end a game pretty quickly especially if you have a cavalier of thorns on the battlefield and maybe a couple of land creatures made from nissa all right we also get two copies of quasi duplicate this is also a little bit of a surprise card for the opponent uh, but also allows you to get a lot of value from the deck you can copy risen reef just to get extra triggers from it allowing you to draw more cards to get more ramp going on you can also quasi duplicate an agent of treachery, steal more stuff from your opponent. You can quasi duplicate an end race forerunner and just go with it. So you name it, you can copy whatever you want. And yeah, I mean this deck it's 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 pretty great. Once you get to ramp properly, you get to curve out. It just it just wins games. Now we have a little sideboard here. We have four copies of Aether Gust, a negate, three mystical disputes. So this is basically our protection package against control, against Simic Flash and decks like that, that we want <clears throat> to be on the draw and counter a couple of things. And then we have uh, two copies of Lovestruck Beast, which is great against the aggro decks. You get a 1-1 that can block and potentially get rid of an aggro creature. And you also get a defensive threat on the 5-5 portion of the Lovestruck Beast. Then we have three copies of Shifting Shifting Ceratops. Obviously, this is a great card against control, against decks that have a lot of counters. <clears throat> you know, also against against aggro decks because it's a 5-4 creature. And it also has protection from blue, which protects it from such things as Aether Gust and some of the removal spells going around in the Is It uh, decks and such. So yeah, I feel you need to play a few games to understand the mechanics of the deck. You really do have to ramp, you really need to curve out properly, and then after that you have to think about how to defend uh, your win conditions, which is Nissa, Cavalier of Thorns, etc. So you need to make sure that once you play these cards, you also have something to uh, protect them against removal from your opponent, because if you only drew one Nissa so far and you play that card and you lose it to something like a Murderous Rider, you know, you might lose the game after that. <laughs> you need to protect your win conditions. All right, guys. Well, that said, um, we will make it easier for you and show you some of our own games to that might help you understand a bit more how the deck is played. And we hope you guys enjoy. Let's go to the games. Okay, guys, we are playing Mythic Simic Ramp in traditional standard. And could be good, potentially. Need to draw into few more things so yeah all right we'll keep it we'll try it we do go first so we get a chance to 
do a couple of things here. Maybe draw into some action. See a Fable Passage. Yep, we're hoping to get a land there. No attacks, so then next turn we can play Cavalier of Thorns. Alright, we're playing against Is It. Seems like Is It Flash at this point. Yep. Alright, so Nissa is coming down. And our opponent concedes. Power of Nissa who shakes the world. Just shook that guy's world. Yeah. Alright, we'll bring the mystical disputes in and um, negate Aether Gust looks good. Just a few of them. Shifting Ceratops could be great as well. We'll go down one Nissa, one Cavalier. Uh, and race doesn't seem that great of a thing here. Although it is kind of our win condition. Yeah, maybe we're limiting. Leave it, leave it in for now. Let's go down Hydro Crasses. Maybe one Grow Spiral, one Mystical Dispute. Uh, let's go down the Quasi Duplicates as well. It's not a game where we want to be trying funny things. We just want to be able to counter our opponent's stuff. And play our stuff at the same time. Right, we are on the draw here. This, this looks good. I like this hand, especially because of this Aether Gust here. All right, our opponent's playing hmm, some sort of Grixes, I guess. Okay, sure. Play the island, and maybe our, our opponent will think that we have a, a mystical dispute in hand, and not play there. Thought Erasure. Sure, that works for me. Play Breeding Pool, keep the Aether Gust up. Alright, we're gonna pass the turn. I like leaving the Aether Gust up. It's definitely something that could be useful here. Alright, so this is full on Grixis with. Fires of Invention. All right, let's pass the turn again. If they have the Fires of Invention, we can Aether Gust it. So, I think that's fine. It's a fine play for us to do. Okay. So now we can play a Lifkin Druid because we keep the Aether Gust up. So are they going to decide to play something or are they going to keep passing? That is the question. Who wins the control matchup against Grixis, Fires, and Simic Ramp? Alright, they're going for the kill, which we'll let go, that is fine with us opponent. If you want to use your Angrath Rampage on our creature, we'll play another one. That is a sorcery. Let's see what they go for here. And this could be a Liliana, possibly. That might be an issue for us. We don't really have a way to get rid of her at this point, but... We 
Not much we can do but sit and wait. Okay, they're getting getting rid of our Alright, sure. Taking damage by using their murderer's rider. Passing the turn. And we'll keep playing our lifting druids. I sort of feel pretty comfortable saying that they have a Fires of Invention in hand, but that is another Murderer's Rider, sure. Are they going to play a Murderer's Rider? That is the question here. The main question, at least. Yep, that is the Murderous Rider. Now let's see if they have a counter for this. Okay, no counters. But they are firing off something. Bone Crusher Giant. This is very interesting for sure. Okay. Kinda just brought lots of removal in. It's like a Grixis control without fires maybe, or they just haven't drawn the fire. But it's definitely possible. Alright, so we are a little bit behind here, so I believe we have to Aether Gust whatever our opponent, whatever red part our opponent plays next. We sit around this Aether Gust much longer we're probably not even going to use it okay, here comes the bone crusher all right so we can play a five five crosses here Alright, so we're gonna get a few triggers here from Risen Reef. Mystical Dispute. Um, Alright, let's we'll counter that. Right upon you have another Mystical Dispute, which in, you do, that's fine with us. You wanna do that? Okay. So that means we're free to play our Cavaliers next turn. I'm not going to complain about that. So if they play this Murderer's Rider, they probably don't have a lot going on in their hands. Alright, that's good. It's a good sign. Spawn Mayhem? Sure. You can block that.
<laughs> All right, our opponent concedes. Yeah, they see the writing on the wall. Good game, opponent. Okay, we're ready for another game with Simic Ramp in traditional standard. Our opponent goes first, but I do like these scries here, so we are going to keep this. Alrighty, we're playing either a mirror match or against Simic Flash. Alright, Forest, Razor, Temple of Mystery, Scry. Lift and Druid. Eh, I don't think we need more ramp at this point. I mean, we could always use more ramp, but uh, I kind of want more action. If we're playing against Simic Flash, this, this might be tough. Alright, we'll keep the Risen Reef. Let's see. Alright, our opponent didn't play anything there, so... All right, we're we're doing the mirror match thing. All right, opponent, let's see who gets there first. So they will have mana for Nis on this next turn, so that'll be it probably. Whoever plays Nissa first wins this mirror match. Cavalier of Thorns is pretty good here, but problem is N Nissa brings the ending of the game. Yeah, I'm not sure. We'll let this go. I'm not sure blocking here has just anything to do with winning this game. Well, at least we get to block these uh, lands with Cavalier of Thorns. Alright, here comes the first Crassus. It's not great. Pretty big crasses. That's a nine-nine crasses. Uh, Eleven crasses. That's big. Yep. Probably game. Five new cards. Big creature on the battlefield. But um, agent of treachery might. Do the trick here, actually. Alright, so let's see, guys. We can play this. Alright, this, this, this might do it, guys. We play Nissa. We take their Crassus. We get rid of their Nissa. And 
and we can do it all over again next turn. This is reach, does not have trample. So Nissa is still going to be on the battlefield. We can take Nissa. Hmm. Potentially quasi duplicate. So we're playing Nissa. can untap a blue source here. Play Agent Treachery. See how they respond. Okay, so they get to keep their Nissa. So they really need to think about this because we're gonna get to quasi duplicate next turn. Okay, Riss and Reef, sure. So they have a total of 9 mana available. Now they have a total of 7 mana available. That's exactly the mana they need for an Agent of Treachery to do what? Okay, well... It's not really gonna do it, opponent. What's next? Okay, they get to untap a land, so now they, they're back to seven. So, do they have the agent in hand? They do not. All right, good game. So, it could have been bad for us there if they had the agent. All right, so there are, they are on the play, so I think... Having these options are probably pretty good. Take one Nissa out. I'd rather have the Aether Gust and the Mystical Disputes in. And Cavalier for... Ceratops might be fine as well. Take out the agent and the... I don't think we need Finale of Devastation here, actually. Take that out, bring in... Bring in the more Ceratops and go from there. I'm not quite sure about the Ceratops in the mirror match. I feel like they're pretty good because our opponent's most likely going to also bring counters, right? So, alright, we'll, we'll try this. It's not like the best hand. We're, we don't get to do a lot of ramping, but we do get to Mystical Dispute something. Alright, so we are signaling... We have a Mystical Dispute in hand. We play Breeding Pool, there's not much we can do, let's just, let's just Temple of Mystery. We'll keep the land. Alright, they're gonna try to go for the Lovestruck Beast here. Question is, why are they taking so much time to attack? Alright, so we we now know about the Love Struck Beast, right? That gives us uh this gives us gives us options. Oh, 
how do we do this? Um, can't really defend Nyssa that well at the moment. They don't have mana for Nyssa yet. So I think... I think we find a way to protect. ourselves from Lovestruck Beast by killing the token with our Crassus. They could also Aether Gust if they want. That might be okay if they use an Aether Gust and a 1-1 one, one Crassus. Okay, we're not blocking that. we rather block later. What's next? Alright, they have a Crassus of their own. Sure. Shifting startups could be trampled, so... I think we go for it. We might be able to kill Nyssa, possibly, with our Ceratops. I'm not, not quite sure that was the best move, but... It's something. I think the whole thing, what, what we're trying right now is to protect Nyssa when it comes down. If we get to stick Nyssa down on the battlefield, that might do the trick. We are going to take that because, again, we want to keep the blockers available for when Nyssa comes down. And we are playing against Simic, so they don't really have like burn spells or anything like that. Cavalier is pretty good. I mean, you know, it's another creature they get into play that can attack next turn. We get to untap breeding pool. Okay. Yep. Alright, do control a forest. We get Nessa down. See how our opponent plays here. This could be game winning or they could also lose the game if they don't play properly here. Alright, so they're gonna go for the aggressive portion of the game here. Okay. Attack with everything most likely. Yep. Do we survive here? It's haste. Okay. None of these have trample, so we survive that one life. Yeah, I don't see how we win from here. I mean, even if we play agent, 
what do we get from that? We get 5, 6. We have a 2, 3. We have to kind of get the Hydrocrasses as well because it's a flyer. So, yep, good game. Opponent just went on the aggressive side with the Lost Rugby. So now we know that that's coming. So... We'll do the same. We'll go from there. We can take the quasi duplicates out as well. I don't think that's something we need here. We want to be able to ramp up quickly here. So, yep, let's try that. We are in the play, so we have a little bit of the advantage here. Alright, that is, uh, that is Ram. We'll keep it. A little bit of Scrying here. We'll keep the Druid. Opponent scrying, but bar ramping first. That's good. Pass the turn. Let's see if they play something. Okay, they're keeping mana up for a mystical dispute, but that's not going to work with Cavalier Thorns. And we get to play another one next turn, so not bad. Short. So you're on turn four with four mana. What um what are you planning to do now, I guess? Alright, left can join, so you're trying to ramp up a bit. They can aether gust one of our cavaliers. Which is probably fine for us. Here comes the Aether Ghost. Yep. Nissa here, not sure how great that will be, but alright, they play their own Cavalier. We'll get to do some scrying as well at the end of our turn. Alright, they're keeping nothing on top.
right no reason for us to attack not much we can do here this is a little bit of a waiting game whoever gets I think whoever gets agent of treachery on the battlefield first probably wins this game Okay, left hand druid, sure. Another wrist and reef trigger. Alright, so it seems like a crassus is coming down. That is going to be good, I believe. Oh, that is the agent, okay. Yep, taking one of our cavaliers, sure. <coughs> okay, passes the turn. Alright, so Agent is down. Do they have a quasi-duplicate in hand? Alright, that's another rift. That's not bad. They could draw into the quasi-duplicate now. Alright, we are a little bit behind, guys. Not good. They get to scry as well. Two to the top. Sure. Alright, so they found what they needed there. That's Ceratops, yep. Sure. Not completely sure what the plan is, okay. Alright, they're going for the Nissa kill. This has Trample as well. Do they care do we care about the island? That is the question. We might just care more. Hmm. Alright, we'll try this. We can now scry. Alright, we do like a big process. Big process is good. Big process is nice. Don't think shifting Ceratops is great here because of the Cavaliers.
All right, well, that's an agent of treachery. And we do have a Mystical Dispute available for a blue Breacher. Now, we didn't left. Okay, here comes their Crassus. So maybe that's fine. They'll gain a lot of life, though. It's 12. Okay, so that's another 10-10 Crassus. Okay, they'll get five out of that one. It's an 11 11, so they're just making it a bit bigger than ours. Yep. But we should win next turn because we got to Aether Gust that. And that should be game. Good game, opponent. It's pretty rough there for a second, but we got there. Okay, we are playing Simic Ramp. Mythic Simic Ramp, actually. This hand is quite slow, so we are going to mulligan this. Alright, we'll try this. We do go first, so maybe we get to play Nyssa before we die. We will send one copy of her. To the bottom of the library, that's it. Alright, we're playing against some sort of Ragdos Knight. Uh, this might be a tough one. It's just we're, we're, we're too slow for these guys. So, not sure if we can do anything about that. And we don't have any... Alright, this is Mono Red. Alright, so we'll do our best here against Mono Red, but not great per se. Alright, this is an interesting version of Mono Red. No blocks, sure. Great, that is another Nyssa. Exactly what we needed. Just pass the turn and hope for the best here. If our opponent kills this Lifkin Druid, we're probably gonna concede. We have to block, so... Yep, so... Alright, we'll wait one more turn, but we're actually pretty dead at this point of the game. We'll have to play this good. Let's do it. Not sure if we wanted to show our opponent we have a finale of Devastation, but... Alright, I think we'll play the Arboreal Gracer this way. We'll get a land uh, in the battlefield now, instead of having to wait for next turn or whatnot. Again, not sure this is gonna help to win this game, but we'll do our best, of course. We're taking three here plus Ember Cleave. 
And that's game. Yep, not much we can do there. I mean, the Fervent Champion, the problem is the other Fervent Champion gets gives it a plus, so, yep. Alright, that's fine. Mono Ratch against a really slow hand. How much we could have really done there. Alright, sideboarding. What do we do? So, Love Struck Beast comes in. Shifting Ceratops looks sort of a real thing here. Aether Gust could work. Alright. So, what do we take out? Some Nissus. Hydrocrasis is too slow. Was I duplicate? We don't need. I don't think we're gonna win with Enrace Forerunners or Agent of Treachery. So, let's go with this. We're basically lowering lowering our mana cost here, our curve. All right, this is interesting. I mean, we do need a third land. I think we keep this. I think we try this because of this love struck beast that we get to play next turn. Of course, I say one one, but I think it's a it's a fair play there. No blocks. Opponent can decide to shock that afterwards. That's fine. Okay. Lift and Druid. Alright, so that gets us closer to shifting Ceratops, actually. We are going to attack here. Not sure where, why we shouldn't. We can keep it to block, but there's nothing... I mean, if they... Fervent Champion has haste and it has first strike, so we're not really blocking with our token. Okay, Rimrock Knight, sure. Alright, that is fine. Alright, we can't really block that, so that's that. Play the Love Struck Beast. No attacks. Right. So our opponent could play an Ember Cleave here. Don't really have a choice other than blocking. All right, that's a barge in. Sure. Okay. Very interesting choices there from our opponent. Don't think we need a grazer now, we need a land. Let's play the Risen Reef, see if we can get that land sometime soon. Alright, there it is, that's good. We're not gonna attack, just in case, I mean, I think ideally at this point, our 11 life, we have to block even though we lose our token. The less life we lose, the better, so, yep, it's okay. Alright, very interesting, so we get to Nissa now. And luckily, this should be game. We get to attack with Vigilance. Our opponent could kill this, but we still have our Nissa available, so. If they play the Bone Crusher Giant, that means they don't have removal in hand, so. Yep. Alright, that's fine. 
We have a hasty 6 for sure. We'll definitely block here. We lose for Castle Vantures, but that's fine. Cavalier. Play a shifting Ceratops. See if our opponent can get out of this one. Uh, quite some big creatures there we have, so. Okay, it seems like an Ember Cleave is coming, so. If Ember Cleave comes down, we still have to win. Yep. So they figure out, I think they were gonna go for the Ember Cleave, but if we, if we let Nissa die, we just win next turn, so that would have been fine. All right, so that was that was good. That was pretty good. Now we are on the draw this turn. All right, I think we keep this. Now, red being on the play is very scary, but going for it. Okay, this is not the worst hand. Having Risen Reef, it's kind of nice. Only problem is, what if they kill it? What could be better than this? I think we keep this. The problem is we don't have these. Are, this, this is kind of our low curve. So if we change this to something like uh, like trying to get a love struck, a love struck beast, and we mulligan and we don't get it, then we could be in serious trouble. So this is much better because at least we have blockers here. And Risen Reef, it's, you know, it's something. Yeah, and there, there it is. Our lovely beast. So, hopefully that allows us to keep playing for a few extra minutes. I think if our opponent attacks, we should block. But they decided not to go for it, so it's fine with us. Play a Druid. No attacks. Let's see what our opponent chooses. Okay, they're gonna destroy the... Alright, so that means they are playing Bone Crusher Giant probably this turn. Could shock our lift and druid. That's a possibility, but again, that is fine if that's what they want to do. Yep. All right, another risen reef is not a bad thing to have. Crush Giant, our, low, our opponent's low on mana here too, so... Okay. We'll play the Bluffstruck Beast now, and then next turn we can Risen Reef plus Lifkin Druid. Get a little bit of extra draw there. Here comes the Bone Crusher, yep. Hydrocrasis is actually pretty good at this point in the game, so we're not going to complain about that.
Now, should we attack or should we keep this in case of Ember Cleave? I believe we keep this back. Should be in a bit of a better shape once we've played our Hydroid Crassus. Hopefully we can draw into some Aether Gusts to get rid of Ember Cleave. Alright, so here we'll, we'll see the Ember Cliff come down. They will have something to get rid of the Love Struck Beast. That's probably okay. That might allow our Hydro Crassus to live. So we get a 6-6 six, six crosses. We gain some life. We can attack with Riss and Reed. Alright, so there's the land. So this means Emmerich Leaf is online. Sort of okay, I guess. So if we play this, we tap four, we get six mana. And we have four more. We have a ten ten crasses, maybe or eight eight crasses. That's an 8 8 crasses. It's not bad. We'll attack with the Risen Reef. Alright, so we have Aether Gust. That should be good. Yep, alright, our opponent concedes. Good game, opponent. That was all for today. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And click the bell icon if you want to get notified whenever we upload new videos. Have a good one.